When we speak publicly about what matters most to us, we connect with people and connect people with each other. My whole life, I've been learning how to address injustice. In elementary school, I shouted about my teacher's racist practices, not without consequence. In college, I connected students of color and STEM majors to academic resources and each other. And 13 years ago, I founded a social impact firm that advances equity in schools and communities. Lately, I've been hosting and producing a live stream show where I interview professionals who center equity in their work, meaning they work to make the world a more just place. And I do this because it matters to me. For more than two decades, I've worked with mission-driven organizations to address inequities in the communities they serve. I've encountered professionals who feel isolated from others, who do similar work in different places, or misunderstood by those who have not experienced the trauma of oppression, or have yet to interrogate how their beliefs and practices can contribute to this pain. To counter this, I speak to build community. That is, I connect people who identify as social justice warriors or aspire to do so. And I celebrate them by bringing attention to the perspectives, practices, and tools they utilize in their communities to achieve equitable outcomes in the places in which they live, work, and play. So far, I have interviewed 24 people of color, 15 of them black women. I choose to amplify their stories because, like me, they are members of communities that have been historically excluded from places, opportunities, and decision-making that have shaped learning, earning, health, and expression. Yet, they engage in activism and advocacy that have contributed to more equitable schools, economic mobility, inclusive workplaces, health equity, and gender justice. They, in fact, make the world a more just place. As these social justice warriors speak publicly about the critical work they perform, they describe the twists and turns in their professional and personal lives that have led them to their current positions of CEOs, executive directors, physicians, nurses, professors, program officers, authors, they reflect on their lived experiences and identities. They share stories and examples that showcase the perspectives, practices, and tools that guide their work. I am eager to connect others to their mission and storytelling so we can visualize this very important work they perform and listen and learn from them about the experiences of the people and places they serve. These public interviews offer current and future social justice warriors opportunities to connect, comment, and ask questions about what matters most to them. And because learning matters to me, I share with you three acts of justice that have emerged from these interviews. I do this to connect us, and as next steps in building a learning community that informs how we pursue justice. Act of justice number one. Speak truth to power about injustice, its origins, and resulting practices. My interviews with social justice warriors go beyond debates about the existence of injustice or denial about contributing factors such as policies, practices, and people's actions. Because these types of discussions delay change. These social justice warriors engage in dialogue where they name systemic racism and describe gendered racism to explain gaps in achievement, wealth, and entrepreneurship. They discuss how redlining practices have created disparate learning experiences for black and white students. 
They illustrate how structural barriers like limited public transportation, narrow employment opportunities for families in low-wealth neighborhoods, and they report on how bias can contribute to physicians under-treating pain in African-American children and teachers over-disciplining African-American students in schools. When we accept these powerful truths about injustice and speak about them publicly, we create opportunities for us to develop shared language and meaning that is necessary for us to counter and dismantle these very real systems of oppression. Act of justice number two. Speak your truth about your lived experiences and how they have shaped your inquiry and activism. Of course, these social justice warriors recount observations, cite evidence, and put forth examples that illustrate how injustice plays out and is resisted in communities that have been placed in the margins. They also share their lived experiences. They discuss how their racial, gendered, religious, and queer identities connect them to the communities they serve. They describe incidents of discrimination that involve family members and themselves and how that compelled them into action. They highlight colleagues who have created space for them to feel their feelings while navigating this very emotional work. And they shout out mentors and sponsors who have guided them through career changes so they could grow their impact. Their origin stories, their adventures in social justice connect us to their work and them. When we speak our truth publicly, and tell our story about how we have become who we are, we model that the act of reflection is necessary for us to perform this critical work. We also preview for others what matters most to us, offering insight into how and why we pursue justice. Act of justice number three, speak to empower the communities you serve by addressing what matters most to them. It's true. Social justice warriors want to save the whole wide world. And this can be overwhelming to so many. To narrow their scope, they focus on specific challenges in communities. They apply critical frameworks to address key factors like anti-racism, to address racism as the root cause of inequities in schools, or black feminist epistemologies to affirm how gendered racism has shaped the experiences of black women in computing, and solidarity as a practice of connecting across communities with different histories and oppressions toward the common goal of justice. With respect and care, they study their communities to gather information and engage them in decision making. Grant makers fund change that matters when they ask communities what they need. Learning designers increase access to out of school STEM learning when they place it in libraries near public transportation hubs. And advocates help families identify solutions that are meaningful to them when they offer mediation in place of oppressive institutions like our courts. When we empower others to tell their stories about their lived experiences and listen to them, about what they need and want to change their circumstances, we begin to learn what matters most. It is then that the frameworks we apply, the questions we ask, the decisions we make about how communities participate 
can create the conditions for equitable outcomes in the places in which we live, work, and play. I am grateful for these social justice warriors who speak publicly about what matters most to them, their pursuits of justice. Each conversation builds community when we listen and learn from each other. So yes, we must speak truth to power about injustice, develop shared language and meaning among us. And yes, we must speak our truth about how and why we pursue justice. And absolutely, we must speak and act in ways that empower the communities we serve, adapting frameworks and practices to address what matters to them. But most importantly, we must connect to others who do this critical work and engage in dialogue with them so that we can ensure that our perspectives, our practices, and our tools do in fact make the world a more just place.